afternoon, wherever you're watching from. I decided I was so in the mood for stuffed cabbage, but there's a reason. Because we all visited my sister Carol, who lives in Maryland, uh, just this last weekend. And my sister Donna was staying with her a little bit longer just for a visit. And then Donna mentioned in a text that she was making stuffed cabbage. And I said, you're making me hungry. But I only had a little cabbage. He was this big, literally just this big. In fact, here's the core of it. Little tiny guy, he was about that big. But that's okay, I had an idea. What if I made a deconstructed stuffed cabbage? You know how sometimes you do that? So I have everything out and ready and I hope it works. Oh, I forgot the cabbage is in the sink. Um, so, PRB. <laughs> Okay, I'm coming, guys. All right. What I did with this little cabbage, look at this is like half of it, so you can tell. Um, I thought I could do it raw and chop it up in a million pieces and do the, the layer thing. The ground meat, the sauce, and then the cabbage or any uh, order of that. But I thought it only takes a couple minutes to steam it. So that's what I did. I used this little pot and I cut it just in one, two, three pieces, filled it with hot water, just steamed it probably honestly like five to seven minutes and that was it. So now some of the leaves came off and I'm hoping these will peel back pretty easily. See, okay, yeah, it looks like it'll work. So I've never done this before. So you're doing it with me. Let's cross our fingers and get going. Okay, so with my uh, way that I make stuffed cabbage, I know there's like both ways. I use cooked rice. I don't like it raw in there. I don't know why, I just don't. And I always make a little extra rice on purpose for that reason. Then I don't use a combination of meats, I just use ground meat, so. So I do about half and half. I already forgot something else too, the egg for the binder. Okay, so I have about this much leftover rice. So I'll do about that much ground meat. What do you think? Let me get my eggs before I touch my ground meat. Okay. I never know if I'm gonna use one or two eggs. So we'll see how it feels. Because eggs are binders, you know, they hold everything together. Let me put that in there and that in there. Oh, I should have had a bigger bowl. And another thing that I like in mine, and tell me if you like yours too, chopped onions. So I have a rag to wash my hands. Let me get this in here. Okay. Lots of onion. These, I have them not minced, but chopped finely because um, this should cook off real fast, you know? And I'm just gonna go for it, ready? <laughs> your two best tool, your two best tools in the kitchen. And this is how I always shape mine. Then I get in a circle like this. Maybe not for this. I should have used a bigger bowl. Duh, I have a bigger bowl right here. Yeah, I think I'll use it. Ready? Get in there, rice. I, I keep thinking with my leftover rice, I'm gonna make rice pudding, but I haven't done it yet. I might as well get the egg right in now. See, can you guys see that? Yeah, of course you can. Okay, flip it around, get the onions off the bottom, and then let's do some eggs. Uh, that little I'm gonna do two, just to ensure that it sticks together, okay? I had someone tell me I made, every time I, no, not every time, she said, I made it twice and they fall apart. And I couldn't figure out because all the ingredients were correct that she was using, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Um, but here she was browning the ground meat first. And I'm like, oh honey, don't do that. So, don't do that. I'm gonna use raw ground meat. Do you use part like pork or anything? I don't know. You know, I love ethnic dishes and Pittsburgh's a 
a town that we have different sections, if you're not familiar. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I got to do this. Um, different parts of our city that are when immigrants came over, they all settled in different pockets. So we have like Squirrel Hill. We, we have one that we call Polish Hill and everybody calls it that, you know. Um, the Bloomfield is very Italian uh, ethnicity there, you know. And the thing is, we all celebrate each other. And I'm not kidding you. Growing up, you didn't even think anything of it. What Like what nationality are you? If it was just a question, it was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I have that in me too. Um, you know, but different sections of the city and we all celebrate. But on St. Patty's Day, I think everybody's Irish. <laughs> and we have big parades here for that too. I think Pittsburgh has any excuse to have a, a good uh, parade and party, you know? So as far as spices, I go easy on it, but I'm going to do this lefty. This is onion powder because I do have onion in here. I'm going to do this lefty. Of course, it's all stuck. There we go. Put some of that in there. You can put in what you want. Garlic salt. I'm going to do a pinch of salt in there. And that's it. I always say that's it, Fort Pitt. Fort Pitt is from Pittsburgh. It's in Pittsburgh. Thus the name Pittsburgh. Okay, I'm going to wipe my hand off. And I have the cabbage. I hope it cooperates and like separates and stuff. Let's see if it does. In fact. Let's do that now. Um, I know. You move here. Come on down. You're at the next cutting board on cooking with Aunt Shirley. There we go. Okay, I don't need this, but I wanted to show you it. Okay. Let's see. Let me just see how much I can separate these. Just into big leaves. I could just make some cabbage. Look at this. They would be little and they might not close so well, but I'm just gonna layer it. Like, think lasagna. Guys, I only steamed this, and granted it was small, but I only steamed it. These ones, big guys just fell right off for the tiniest bit, and here's the other half. Okay, let's see how that works. That's very wet, very wet, and that's okay. Okay, I'm just peeling it off. I did uh, a video, or it was like still pictures with commentary on cabbage rolls, pigs in a blanket, that kind of thing. So what I'll do is I'll put the little guys on the bottom and then I'll hold up the meat mixture, I think. So I'm gonna spray this. I don't love this stuff, but it sure does work. Okay. I can't breathe with that. I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce on the bottom. I'm using just crushed tomatoes. I do not flavor my red sauce Look at that, I just did. Um, because I maintain the flavors of the stuffed cabbage. See how I'm going up the side just a little bit? I like to do that, okay? Uh, I, I maintain that the flavors uh, permeate the sauce and make it taste delicious, so there's that. I'm gonna use these little thick guys. You know, since I've never done this, I'm really thinking now, maybe I should the meat mixture first. That's what I'll do. Let me get this all undone. These are pretty loosey-goosey. You know what I do when I'm in the store with cabbage? I usually buy, unless I'm really gonna cook up a storm with it, I buy the lightest one, because they're usually by the pound, and I tend to buy the smallest one, because I can make coleslaw and maybe like two things with it by the time it goes bad. So let me do it like this. Oh, I don't know. You know, everybody has their ways. I'm going to just pack it in there like a layer. Here's my meat mixture. So what did we put in there? Ground beef. We put in cooked rice, a little onion powder, and some egg for binder. So why don't I do it like this? I'm gonna divide it up so that my sections are kind of even. Maybe I'll make like a little bit of a flat patty because that's ultimately when it's gonna be like, right? Put that there. 
I'll move this. It's always an effort to make you guys see. Okay, I'll put that one there. I think this will work. Why wouldn't it? That's all the same flavor profiles, right? So as you can see, I decided just now, I'm gonna kind of make it like that. And then I can fit it down in. We're getting there. in the middle. This just might work. Now, honestly, it is easier. I hope it'll cut okay, you know, when it's all finished. So let's get them in there. A little bit of the sauce is peeking through, but that's okay. Onions. Look at this. Oh, my hands are messy. It's kind of one layer. Now for the cabbage. Maybe I'll save these other ones. Okay, I'm just gonna start layering. And then I'll put some more sauce on, just that canned sauce, and I'll bake it. But I definitely am gonna protect the cabbage with more of the sauce. So I'm gonna layer it all the way up. What do you think? Now, should I cut these off? I usually do. See the ribs? I usually cut them off whenever I'm making a cabbage roll. Let me throw that in the cabbage bowl. I'm going all the way to the end, guys. So the bigger ones I am gonna cut the ribs out. How about I just concentrate on these? Get in there. And I think a, a knife will just cut right through this whole thing, but we'll see. We'll see, and I love a lot of cabbage, so I'm gonna get as much in there as I can. Just breaking off the ribs. Yeah, and like this one, look, this is like kind of tough. It's like romaine lettuce. I always cut the ribs out. I don't even know if that's officially what they're called, but that's what I've always called them. But y'all know what I mean, right? So. I'm getting, like I said, the little guys in there first, and then I'll start piling on. I'm gonna give it a squish. Start piling these on. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this. I thought my cabbage was too little. And my sister's made me hungry. So I texted my sister Donna this morning and I said, how was your dinner? She said, it was good. They froze a little bit of it. I'm not gonna have room for the sauce, guys. You know what I'll have to do? Put it on a cookie sheet. So if it overflows, I'll put some uh, aluminum foil, not parchment. If you put parchment down on your cookie sheet, you better just be cooking something for a short period of time. I wanna cook this for a longer period of time. Oops, that looks chucky. Out. Okay, so you can see where I'm going with this, right? I'll hold it up again. It's heavy. Like that, I don't want the sauce to tip. Okay, any more big guys? I'll just munch on these, look. Okay, let's do this. Um, yeah. I'll layer it. I can always open up another can, but I'm gonna cover it so it doesn't like scorch, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna open up another can. You don't have to wait and watch me do that. You just know I'm gonna put a little bit more sauce. I'm gonna push this down in. Get in there. I guess you could use like a jar of sauce. But why do it? This is so much less expensive. It tastes more tomatoey and then it's true to the flavor, other flavors that you're using, like the meat and the cabbage and whatnot, you know? You know what, guys? Maybe I'll just bake it like this. I think that's enough sauce. I put a little bit on the bottom. You know, it'd be good some shaker cheese on that, huh? I am gonna spray the bottom of my aluminum foil before I lay it across here so it doesn't stick. 
That's what I'm gonna do. And then I put it on a cookie sheet lined with foil so the foil can take the heat the whole time in case it bubbles over. And I don't know how for how long, but I know that ground meat in that way will cook pretty quick. Uh, I, I like 350 for like almost an hour. I don't know. I'm gonna turn this off and I'll see you on the rebound. Okay, so I just took it out. It's been in there a little over an hour actually on 350. And let it sit for a second, but it's still pretty hot. So watch the steam. It didn't overflow onto the cookie sheet, which is good. I'm gonna check for tenderness. Try a little tenderness. Yeah, it should be done, but I do want to peek. Let me get a spoon. Or better than that, a little fork. And it was bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. So let me see if I can peek at the meat, you know? It's going to be cooked. I can just tell. I don't want to disturb it too much. It stayed together. See that? Mm, it smells just like a regular pigs in the blanket stuffed cabbage to me. I might like put a little cheese on there, just like a little Parmesan or something. Um, and I think there'll be enough of the sauce. So I want to wait to cut it when it's, I want to wait till it's cool to cut it. So stay tuned for that and then we'll finish it off. First piece came out in one layer. Look at that. Can you see the layers? Looks good to me.